I've read a lot and heard a lot about supplementing with amino acids. What's your perspective on amino acids? And if so, uh, which ones would you recommend we supplement with? Well, uh, like all supplements, uh, they're certainly not all from a uniform uh, group. Um, so for me, I've done um, a little bit of homework on which amino acid supplements I tend to like uh, based on the reputation of the company and a couple of assays I've done or experiments I've done on the product. So with that caveat, meaning they're not all created equal, um, I tend to supplement amino acids in small amounts, but of two different variants and for two different purposes. The first is what I call the branch chain amino acids, or the BCAA, and I'm sure you've seen these in performance stores and sports stores and things like that. There's some evidence, and it's reasonable, uh, not bulletproof, but reasonable, that using branch chain amino acids during intense bouts of exercise, and by intense bouts I mean any sort of exercise, be it in the dry land or in the water, where you're really breaking down muscle tissue, um, can actually prevent that. So it can actually preserve tissue integrity uh, and muscle cells uh, during those periods of exercise. So I do supplement with that. In a very small amount, probably two to four grams, I'll mix in a powder form into my bottle and drink that. The other amino acid I, I think that is worth supplementing with, and at least again there's some reasonable evidence that suggests it's beneficial, is, is one called glutamine, or glutamate, depending on what form it's in. And I find using this post-workout can actually aid in recovery. So I think for people who really want to sort of push the boundaries of what can they add, those are probably two options to consider. Are there any others, or is a lot of the information that we see in some of the popular literature hype? Well, the problem with this industry is that it's not subject to any regulation. So if you want to come out and make a drug, for example, you have to jump through a lot of hoops to, first off, prove that it's not harmful, and second off, prove that it works. And as you know, and as I know, we can all think of examples where those turn out to not be true. <laughs> when you want to create a food supplement like this, a nutritional supplement, you don't actually have to jump through those hoops. So there's a far greater degree of variability on the quality of what you're getting. So the thing I would say is, one, buy your stuff from someone who knows what they're talking about. And I've found a really good store here in San Diego, and I don't know if they're nationwide, but they're called NutriShop. I've just found the guys there to be really knowledgeable on this topic. Two, I've had the privilege of knowing some people who have some really fancy laboratory equipment that can do tests on my stuff. So Consumer Report came out with a um, report about a year ago that picked the top 10 most popular protein products out there, and it ran an analysis on them for dangerous trace elements, mercury, lead, arsenic, cadmium, things like that and it found that many of the popular products out there actually had harmful levels of these metals in them. So I actually took my stuff to a laboratory, had a laboratory run an assessment on the stuff I was using uh, to give me peace of mind to know that at least the products I, were, I was buying didn't have any of those dangerous toxins in them. But unfortunately, Mike, this is an area where I think you've got to do your homework and figure out who you're buying from and what you're buying.